Hey YouTube, it's Sean ripping RC planes. In a previous video, we were comparing apples to apples. The Spectrum AR636 receiver. The receiver we all know, the 636, is what comes in, what used to come in, the E Flight and some Hobby Zone and some Blade helicopters, the AR636, A and the B model. And then after some time went on, Spectrum Horizon Hobby, they released a, a jailbreak in a update where we could program them custom. We could program them for any plane we built or acquired or what have you. Or you could import preset model files from Spectrum's file share program into the receiver. You know, so say you came across a certain E-flight plane and it didn't have a receiver, then you came across the 636, you could go to their file share program and input the model files into the receiver and put it in your plane just as if you bought a bind and fly plane that has a 636 or helicopter or hobby zone airplanes. So then we all started programming, programming but programming them. Now the smart telemetry uh, forward programming receivers are out there, but these are still fantastic receivers. Now, I came across a Spectrum 636 receiver that did not ever come in a bind and fly, and we're trying to compare the difference. In the video prior to this one, we put it in my demonstration test plane here, and we bound it, and it just acted like a brand, just a basic six-channel receiver. The AS3X and the Safe Select is not active at all until you register it on Spectrum's website and update it, and then you need to program it for the gyro to work. Well, we were just trying to see what what it has before you program it, and basically it has nothing but a six-channel receiver. So, this video, we're going to register it to my Spectrum account. Let's see what the uh, software level is in it. Let's see what update is there. Let's you know, see how many things, how many times it's been passed. Like, I'm sure this has been sitting on somebody's shelf for seven, eight, nine years. You know, so I, I just bought it, but it, it's old stock. So, let's just see what the difference is. Now, the immediate difference is real quick on the sides of the 636 receiver here, there's a three pin micro plug and a four pin micro plug. Now we're wondering what they are. All I can find in the manual, it says plug in your telemetry items. That's all it says. So I'm gonna show you guys here on the, uh, on the TV through my computer and we'll see what's going on in the manual. And then I'll show you the whole process of registering it and updating it. Here we go. All right, we need to unbox this thing, but this is how it comes. If you bought it directly as a 636, I might have it upside down in the package or what have you, but yeah, there you go. Here is the 636 that we all know. Look at the sides here, okay? Just a, just a servo case. Let's get this guy open here. Show you the difference real quick. How about that? And then on the other side. Got a four pin. Now telemetry sensors have four pins and some have three pins. So do some of the remote receivers. Hmm. Alright, now that we got them boxed, we'll go ahead and mount it in our in our test plane. This servo with the blue flag represents the throttle. Just so when we're doing 
some demonstrations. Throttle into number one. Here's a Y harness going to each wing for the ailerons. Right there, and the elevators next to the next one in channel three. Then the rudder, channel four. All of this is is changeable, by the way. If uh, if you were having you know dual dual ailerons or something, it could be be changed. And then I got a battery pack just to power the power our test plane here. And we'll just plug the power into channel six since it's open, and we need the bind plug for doing other stuff. I'm not going to connect the battery right now because we're going to be using our USB program cable and the bind program port. You never ever ever want to have computer power and battery pack power going to the receiver at the same time. That will make for a bad day. On the TV I got Spectrum's website. Let's look at the manual on the 636 here real quick just to see what these plugs are on the side. Really, really curious on exactly what they're saying they're used for. We're going to figure it out. That's a fact. Let's see here. Let's see. All right. AR636. We were already there. And So the instruction manual says it's a six channel full full range receiver with the AS3X. Program, programmable for mobile and PC. Three gyro modes, assignable, assignable channelable channel outputs, which is awesome. Full range aircraft using up to six channels, not for use with the carbon fiber fuselage. And then we see all the inputs right here, the whole the whole receiver is, is outlined, you know, auxiliary, gear, rudder, elevator, aileron, throttle, bind, and programming port. But you don't see on the sides either one of the plugs, and it doesn't say. Now, on the receiver itself, it has sensor written here on an angle right above one of those, one of those, uh, pins. So as we're still curious on what the two plugs are for, let's see where I found, let's see where I found uh, where it said telemetry. Now here's an important fact, using the 636 with the AS3X, by default AS3X technology is turned off in the receiver. Before activating, you'll need to properly install the receiver and download the Spectrum programmer and then program it. So you which makes sense. I mean a gyro can't function until you tell it how it needs to function. It's got to be programmed per that plane. Now in installing the receiver you can install the receiver under the canopy or in the bottom of your fuselage. The servo pins must point towards the nose or the tail. They can't go sideways. They can go, we talked about this in a previous video, there's eight different ways. The pins to the front and all four flat sides or the pins to the rear and all four flat sides. So eight different ways they can be mounted. And then step two it says connect the servo and the telemetry leads to the receiver. That's all it says about those plugs on the side on the side of the uh, of the receiver. That's it. Nowhere else does it say. Maybe when we connect it and uh, update it and register it and open up the the uh, Spectrum Programmer app, maybe it will talk about that. So, all 
Okay, before we register the 636 on my spectrum and then we see if there's any differences after we register it and update it, right now we're on the spectrum updater and you don't have to have the, the receiver registered to power it up to the updater just to see what software level is in it. So 636 in the test plane right there by the blue flag, USB program cable going to the computer. On the Spectrum updater, I'm going to click on power cable. Make sure your battery is not connected. Only power it through the computer only. Power cable, and there's a big warning right there. Power cable. And there's the serial number and the version 1.39. I've never seen 1.39 before. I I think the basic version for the 636's that come in the bind and fly is the 143. I've never seen the 139. That's cool. Interesting. Okay, so let's get the uh, Spectrum Programmer. No, we need to register it. So I'm going to power the cable again. There's other ways of registering like this, but I'm going to go ahead and copy this serial number because you'll need that to register it. I highlighted it and over to the right, copy serial number. And I'm going to make sure it's copied and just, yep, it's copied. I was just checking it. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to unpower it, and I'm at Spectrum RC's website in the My Spectrum section, Product Registration, alright, so we're registering the receiver, what model is it? AR636 registration nickname I'm gonna put it uh, 636 uh, original that way I know the difference and then here it wants the serial number which we copied and then now it's pasted Registration quality is one. Purchase date. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll put Christmas. What the heck? I don't think you really need a date. And then we bought it. This is how they keep up on who's getting what, you know. And where'd you buy it? eBay. And that's it. Now we just need to put this in. Caps lock on. E H B X K Y. Register. Now, if you're ever doing this and you got a second hand receiver or transmitter, if the previous owner did not unregister it you would find that out right this second it would say you can't register it because and then you need to email spectrum and as long as things are on the up and up you know not stolen or something two weeks or less they'll send you an email back saying that it's you know been free and clear and you can go back and do this okay so now it's registered now we just need to find our 636 in the list here and here it is right here and download update and right here we can see what the latest is compared to the 139 that's in it And I'm just kind of glancing through to see if it says anything about the telemetry plugs or whatever on the side of the receiver. Just, just checking it out.
Okay, so those of you interested in putting these receivers in helicopters, now here you go. This is something important right here. It says the Blade Fusion 270 version 4.39. So <clears throat> there's different updates for different applications, all right? Now the latest update for us would be the 2.30, which was uh, last updated or worked on by a Spectrum on March 15, 2019. Then there's one a year prior for Blade Helicopters again, another one for Blade Helicopters, another one for Blade, several of them for uh, Blade. And then there's uh, one for the uh, 636s with the, at the very beginning of them. So. We need to download the 230. And I just clicked on download. And it's finally coming up. <clears throat> Slowly but surely. All right, now the one up here highlighted is the one that we just download. Then I do this drop down right here. Everybody does it different. I click Save As on my desktop and the file name, I'm going to put something I can recognize. New 636 Original. Now that's going to be on my main desktop and I'll be able to find it. Alright, so we're going to get rid of that guy. Back to the Spectrum Updater. Now I tell you what, before we do that, let's go to the Spectrum Programmer. Okay, we got the Spectrum Programmer on the computer pulled up, and we have not updated the software from the 1.39. Let's see what the uh, what the uh, Spectrum Programmer looks like before it's updated. So. Power and cable, power cable, and it says, Do you want to use a device or the computer? We'll go with the device. And here is the Spectrum Programmer. One of the things I was curious about was uh, receiver orientation. If it would save. So let's look at the dashboard. That looks the same as the other 636s. Don't want to update it yet. So far, everything looks the same. That might be more choices right there. We'd have to we'd have to see on another one, but that looks like more choices. Surface setup looks the same. Something cool just to point out to you guys. I'm back on my spectrum where we checked to see what the latest update was, which was a 2.30. Some of you guys are interested in using uh, this 636 in some uh, helicopters. Here's some updates if you have these certain these certain helicopters. And I was just reading one that was really cool about the Blade 230. It had a bunch of calibrations in it. Maybe that's something to do. And you just keep that in mind if you're a Blade 230 guy with a 636. But here, right here, it says model presets. For all the other receivers and the other six and the 636s that come in the bind and flies, when you go to these model presets, here's all the planes that 
that are a bind and fly that came with the older 636. When you click on these to download, it would take you to the Spectrum File Share uh, site. But for right now, for whatever reason, you can download the Carbon Z Cub without having to go to that site. And then you would just save it and you would put it in through the Spectrum Updater. Just something I'd point out. So let's update it. All right, we're gonna update it. We're on back of the Spectrum Programmer, powering the cable. Use the device settings, software update, and the 230, clicking update. Let it run through its its paces here. Successfully updated. And it says it needed to be calibrated. And then it blinked away. I just tried this once. I'm going to try it again here. Let me uh, unpower it. And we'll see if it'll do this again. Power cable. The connected receiver needs to be calibrated. Please place the receiver flat on a level surface and don't touch it or it may fail to calibrate. Now it's sitting on my test plane and I'm cutting in front of you and the test plane might not be level. So we are going to make sure that it's level. Taking this guy and going down. Now I'm checking my my table here. I am level going this direction. And I'm off a little bit right there. I got the stick from the uh, propeller there. Put that under the. What else could we get? Under? That's too much. Oop, oop. You guys okay? I figured if I got this level, level, then I can set the receiver directly on the level. All right, I'm going to call that good. I got, I got it level in every direction. Now start the calibration. You know, this computer program, I bet Spectrum hasn't, uh, you know, done much work on it in the uh, programming department in years. You know, there's no need for them to keep updating this and keep working on it. So that little glitch like that, that could be my internet, could be my computer. Could be whatever, but if you ever get to, to some point and it messes up like that, just start it over. Almost there. Almosty. Bam, calibration passed. Good deal. Power cable off. If you want to win a jet like this, all you have to do is subscribe. Click the like button and leave a comment. And then... Uh, Ring the bell so you don't miss my next video. At a thousand subscribers, we gave this jet away. At five thousand, we're going to give another one. I don't know what it is yet. We'll see when that time comes. So hey, subscribe, guys.
Happy flying.